Welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. When you get your mind renewed, the confession of the Word of God, if you confess it long enough, any single promise you confess long enough, you go to thinking about it the same way God thinks about it. And when you go to thinking the way God thinks, things are going to change. That's, what, that's called renewing your mind. Paul said, be not conformed to the world. Don't be squeezed into the world, no. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And he goes on to say, God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. But all men don't have faith. Well, now how could that happen? If he dealt to every man the measure of faith, not a measure, the measure. Now, I'm going to approach this from a little different angle. You know, sometimes I've heard people say, well, you get all the faith there is when you're born again. No, you get the capacity to operate in all the faith there is when you're born again. But you may not know but one scripture when you get born again. So how could you have all the faith there is? Faith comes by hearing the word. So what word abides in you is all the faith you'd have. But you see, when, when you get born again, God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. The measure of faith is this whole Word of God right here. That's all the faith there is. Faith is resident in the Word. So the way you determine how much faith is in you is how much of this Word abides in you. You can have great faith in one area and no faith in the other area because you might not even know about the other Scriptures. That's why we should uh, study the whole Word of God. So uh, God said that uh, He would take things that are not manifest and bring to naught things that are manifest. That's calling things that are not. You call them for what God has given us. I'm not talking about something God doesn't want you to have. But you're talking about calling what God has given you laying hold on it by faith, calling it into manifestation. That's what the woman with issue of blood did. She made a demand on the provision that was in Jesus. Her faith drew the anointing out of him. Now, J. Iris standing there, I, I left J. Iris standing there. We better give him out of this mess. <laughs> because Jesus turned to him and said, Fear not, only believe. Now, time to make a faith confession. You rest in what you said a while ago. Just keep your mouth shut. Your faith is not always at the same level. When bad news comes, it's not time to start making noise with your mouth. <laughs> Just keep the faith that you had. Now, see, he made a great faith statement. If you lay your hands on my little daughter, she'll be healed and she shall live. He said, fear not. Don't let fear come. If you do, we'll have a funeral tomorrow. Only believe. Just believe. How, what's he going to believe? Believe what he said a while ago. Yeah. Don't change it. Don't back out of the deal. Don't dig up the seed. So he goes down there and uh, runs them all out. Says she's not dead, she's asleep. Now wait a minute. Jesus is calling the girl to sleep and she's dead. Graveyard dead. What's he doing? Calling things that are not as though they were. He took something that was not and brought to naught what was. Now it's important to understand that. This is God's method. It is a valid principle of the Bible. In fact, you see Jesus operate in it in all of his ministry. You watch Jesus. He told the parable of the sower. Then he said, we're going to the other side of the lake. They got in the boat and he went to sleep. You can sleep on Jesus' word. They get out in the middle of the lake and a storm comes on the lake. The devil's trying to kill them all. Now, you know, there's people that believe that everything that happens to you in life is God's will for you. There's people preach that from the pulpit every Sunday morning. 
That's not the truth. And I'm being very nice about it. <laughs> it's doctrine of devils, really. Because, now, now let me show you why I say that. This storm came on the lake. Was it God's will for that storm to come on the lake? The scripture says, Jesus was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. So they woke Jesus up and told him what the devil said. We're all going to drown. It's a St. Charles translation. <laughs> Scarest thou not that we perish? He didn't say we're going out in the middle of the ground. He said we're going to the other side of the lake. Now I see Jesus walk up there. Wipe the sleepy out of his eyes. I don't know. I always saw him put his foot right up on the bow of the boat. Look right out in the face of that stone. He said, Peace! But Jesus is not in it, but he called it. Yes. Now, why didn't he call it like it was? Whoo, that's a big wave. Great wind. That next one will get us for sure. <laughs> you don't get but three verses into Genesis. You see God calling things that are not. Amen. And we were created in his image and his likeness and said, have dominion and subdue the earth and have dominion over it. How? The same way that him had dominion. Yeah. Right. By using his words and faith-filled words for dominion. Jesus said, peace, but there wasn't any, but then there was. And then he said to the waves, be still, but they weren't still, but then they were. And one, one of the writers said, and there was a great calm. You can calm the storms of your life the same way. If you'll learn to look in the face of adversity and say, you'll never hinder me again as long as I live. You hear me say that? One day, this is several years ago, we was, my wife and I were going to Little Rock in the car, and I looked over at her and I said, you hear me saying it? I'll never have a fever blister on my lip as long as I live. I will never have a fever blister on my lip as long as I live. Now, did I say that because I didn't have one? No, I said that because I had one. And right now, I can't remember how long it's been since I had one. Now, what did I say? I get one every month right there, you know, or two or three over here. You watch and see. I don't know what it is. I always get them. Yeah, and you will always have them. Now, don't ask me how that just words can change what's happening to you. <clears throat> well, you can if you want to. <clears throat> because Jesus said it would work. That you would have what you say. <clears throat> and I say I'm going to have some water. <laughs> I said last night, keeps a sermon from being dry. <clears throat> <laughs> so here's Jesus. <clears throat> he just simply looks in the face of that adversity. He says, peace. Wasn't any peace, but then there was. Went to the pool of Bethesda one day. <clears throat> here's a man. Been there, never walked a step in all of his life, crippled from his mother's womb. Jesus walked up to the man and said, will you be made whole? Now, he didn't ask him if he wanted to be. He said, will you? Sometimes I ask people when I lay hands on them, will you be healed? Well, I hope so. That's not the right answer. <laughs> well, they say, I know God's able. That's not the right answer either. The devil knows God's able, but he's not going to get it. Made. <clears throat> now, here's a man. He started talking about his problem. He said, well... I don't have anybody to help me in the pool. Well, Jesus just ignored that. He said, rise, take up your bed and go home. Now, this old boy, now this is Sabbath day. Have you ever noticed that Jesus always got in trouble on Sabbath day? <laughs> sure as the Sabbath came around, he's going to get somebody healed, and he's going to get in trouble. So, uh, <clears throat> wrong day to heal folks on, you know. Anyway, he said, rise, take up your bed, and go home. Now, this old boy had been taught all his life. You don't carry a bed on the Sabbath day. Do any work. 
Now he's got to decide, do I want to be religious or do I want to get healed? He decided he wanted to be healed. Now, what did Jesus do? Jesus called him well. You know, I know Jesus knew, and especially the crippled man knew, that a crippled man can't take up his bed and go home. So he called him well. What's he doing? He's calling things that are not. Now, the first movement that man made whether it was with his hand or, or, or whatever, he's calling his self well. Yes. He's fully persuaded. Yes. Now, Jesus walked into a congregation on the Sabbath day. <laughs> Here you go again. And he and there's a man with a withered arm. I don't know. I always saw it this arm withered like this. Plum under his arm like that. All withered. He told the man, stand up. He said that lawful do good on the Sabbath or do evil. They wouldn't put that with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> he said to the man with a hand, said, stretch forth your hand. Hey, you know, I know Jesus knew it, especially the withered man, uh, man with the withered hand knew if your hand withered, you can't stretch it forth. But if it's healed, you can. Yes. And he stretched it forth as the other. Jesus called him well. Ten lepers standing afar off one day, and they, they, they had to stay a hundred yards from the crowd. They said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on us. Well, Jesus just stopped and looked over there and said, hey, go show yourself to the priest. Do what? Now, the only reason you'd show yourself to the priest if you've been cleansed. They could have said, but Jesus, we're lepers, see? We've got to say it like it is. And they'd have been lepers the rest of their life, probably. He called them clean. The very fact that he said, go show yourself to the priest. Now, the scripture says they're still lepers because it says as they went, they were cleansed. What would have happened if they hadn't went? <laughs> they wouldn't have been clean. The first step they took to the priest's house, they're calling themselves clean. The principle of calling God has chosen things that are not to bring to naught things that are. This is God's method, yes. not man's method. And you see, the carnal mind, the Apostle Paul said, is enmity against God, is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. In other words, you can't operate in this kind of faith in your head. Faith works in the heart. You can't believe with your head what you can believe with your heart. But now if you get your mind renewed, you can get it to the point that it, it, it will shift into neutral and, and will not fight what you know in the spirit. I heard Brother Hagin say this one time, it helped me tremendously. He said, you can't keep a doubt from coming in your mind sometimes, but you can have doubt in your mind, faith in your heart, and it'll still work. Faith will still work. I mean, you can look at a situation, and it look like the worst in the world, and you just have a peace down inside here. I remember one time there was a fellow that, uh, many years ago that, that he'd had a stroke, and uh, a blood vessel broke in his head, and it just looked like he was going to die, and, and they called, and I... I, I was praying in the spirit about it, and it just seemed like he was going to die, sure as the world. And, and I got to praying in the spirit and just had such peace come over me. I said, well, it's all right. It's all right. Now, I couldn't believe that was my head, but I believe it was my heart. So you, you could have doubt in your head and faith in your heart. You see, faith won't work in the head. You know why? Because there's no substance up there. <laughs> <laughs> the substance is in the heart. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. And faith works in the heart. So in, in the ministry of Jesus, uh, you, you just study it from this angle, you'll find that he always operated in the principle of calling things that are not, as though they were. Now, there's always somebody that, you know, they say, well, now, Brother Camps, I just believe you've got to say it like it is. You say anything else, you just lying. Well, just follow that fellow around a day or two and see what he did. 
fact, he'll say that Sunday night at church. Stand up and testify, you know. Bless God, I believe he just have to say it like it is. Go right home to feed his dog, walk out on the back porch, and his dog is not there. He'll stand right there on that porch and say, Here, pooch, here, pooch, here, pooch. I'm going to tap him on the shoulder, and I'm going to say, why are you lying about your dog? Your dog is not here. He is yonder somewhere. You're calling him here, and he's yonder somewhere. Don't know where, pooch. <laughs> now, see, he thinks I'm foolish to say I'm healed when I'm sick. Why am I saying I'm healed when I'm sick? Because I'm sick, and I'm calling for healing. See, there's no power in denying sickness. The power is in calling for what you don't have. God has chosen this method. You call it the way God calls it. And see, if people don't understand that, why, why they just lie. They, they, they're over some occult. No, we're operating in the, the highest form of faith is calling things that are not. Those are right. God did it, taught Abraham to do it. That's the way Abraham became the father of our faith. And God has chosen this method. Now that fellow, let's say that he goes home to feed the dog and the cats there. Well, now he believes that you got to say it like it is, so, so he goes out there and he sits down and he says, well, the cat's here. I, I've got to call the cats. You've got to call it like it is. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. So all the neighbor's cats come over the fence. he got cats all around. His neighbor looks over and says, what are you doing to all these cats? I don't know. I'm trying to feed the dog. <laughs> well, now, wait a minute. If, if you're trying to feed the dog, why are you calling the cats? Well, you have to call it like it is, and when the cat's here, you have to call the cats. <laughs> and laugh, but some of you have been doing the same thing. We ever save any money. The kids all come down sick, and we spend every dime on Dr. B. It happens that way every time. Hey, the cat's there. Quit calling him. <laughs> If you're not careful, you'll catch yourself doing that. Now, this is not something you just learn and just go on and never do uh, make a mistake again. You've got to hear this over and over and over and over. Sometimes my wife will tell me, you need to read your own book. <laughs> <laughs> I need to hear this message just as much as you need to because it keeps it fresh in your mind. But now, see, that guy, let's say he goes off and he goes on vacation and he locks his house up, you know, and turns the air down because, uh, or turns it off because he won't, he'd be gone a month. He comes in, it's 100 degrees in his house. Well, bless God, I believe in saying it like it is. So he walks back to that thermostat and, and he looks at it and, and see now, that thermostat on the wall, it has a thermometer in it and then that thermostat is to change what is. The thermometer is for one reason and one, reason, one purpose only, and that is to tell you how it is. We have a lot of thermometer Christians. They can tell you how it is. And they'll tell you every time you see it. <laughs> you know, they'll call it like it is, but so many of them don't know how to change it. Now, so let's say now, now he, let's say he really believes what he said he believes. You've got to say it like it is. So he looks at the thermometer and said, well, it's 100 degrees, so I'm going to set the thermostat on 100. <laughs> then he goes to sweating. He calls the, the air conditioner man, get out here and fix this unit. Well, what's it doing? Nothing. Well, what's the temperature in there? It's 100 degrees in here. Well, something wrong. He said, oh, I said, where you have the thermostat set? Well, on the 100, of course, I always call it like it is. <laughs> uh-huh, we found the problem. <laughs> now, remember what Paul said in Romans chapter 1? The invisible things of God from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by things that are made. Somebody made that thermostat. This is the way Jesus taught parables illustrations. And that thermostat back there, if you're just smart enough to set it on what you want yeah. and go on and leave it, 
You don't have to fast and pray that it'll know what to do. It won't wash your clothes. It won't cook your food. It wasn't designed for that. It was designed to, to heat and cool this building, and it can do it very well. And did you know that the substance is in the heart of that unit all the time? It's either gas or electricity. But nothing happens until you set the goal setter. That thermostat is the goal setter. Your mouth is the goal setter. You're setting it daily. And it's sending an impulse. When you set that goal setter, it sends an impulse out there and says, it's hot in here, crank up the air. We need some cool air. That unit can't say, no, nah, we think you need heat. We're going to crank up the, no, I can't do that. Because there's a law of electricity. What you said in that sends an impulse out there, said, release the substance and get the cool air in here. That's the way it was designed to. Now, the parable of the sower, Jesus said, the sower soweth the word. So the word is a seed. And he said, he soweth it in the heart of man. The heart of man is the soul. Or, or, or the soil is likened to the heart of man. Jesus said the kingdom of God is that a man cast a seed into the ground. So we're the ones that cast the seed into the ground. Paul said the word is in your mouth and in your heart. When that seed, that word gets in your heart, it makes a demand on the heart of the unit, find a way to cause this to come to pass. Now, I know some of you think I make this stuff up. Go, go, go with me to 1 Corinthians again. <clears throat> Thank God for the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> uh, let's start at verse 7. No, it's 1 Corinthians 2, verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God has ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. But, not through talking, God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Now, in, in your King James Version, the word spirit there is capitalized. It should not be. It is not referring to the Holy Spirit. It's referring to the human spirit. And we'll prove it just a little further on. Because the, the, why would the Holy Spirit search the deep things of God? The Holy Spirit knows as much about the deep things of God as God knows about the deep things of God. It's the human spirit. So eye hath not seen, ear hath not heard the things that God has prepared for them that love them, but God revealed them to us by His Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. He revealed it to our spirits, for our spirits search all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man? The human spirit knows all about you. And uh, the spirit of man, which is in him, even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. So God's Spirit knows all about God, and your Spirit knows all about you. You get those two spirits together, you've tapped the source of all knowledge. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. Why? That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So the human spirit knows how to access the wisdom of God. So when we start saying, thank God I have abundance and no lack because I've given it's given unto me good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, you created a problem for the heart of the unit, but it knows how to fix it. It'll search the avenues of God's wisdom and find a way to cause you to be in the right place at the right time for the right situation to see the manifestation of the promise of God in your life. I'm glad you could join us for the broadcast today. Now, our offer this week is this CD here is called God's Creative Power.
for healing. It's a talking book. I read this on the CD, and it has the confessions in it. It's offer number 1155, offer, CD offer number 1155, and you can call it a talking book, CD offer with a talking book, God's Creative Power for Healing for $8 plus $3 postage and handling. Now, it's important to know that God's power, or God's creative word has never lost its power. That's what we're talking about when we talk about God's creative power. God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Well, he didn't send his word to heal. He sent his word and heal. And what we do is we read from the little booklet, God's Creative Power from Healing, onto this CD, two CDs in this, uh, no, it's only one CD. So one CD for $8 plus $3 postage and handling. It starts out, Jesus is the Lord of my life. Sickness and disease have no power over me. I'm forgiven and free from sin and guilt. I'm dead to sin. I'm alive unto righteousness. I am free from unforgiveness and strife. I forgive others as Christ has forgiven me. For the love of God is shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. Now, I'll tell you, when you begin to confess these things and confess uh, that there is health in your body, you know, the Word of God is in you, and the Word will bring healing and health. God sent His Word and healed and delivered from destruction. We have a toll-free order line. It's 1-877-396-9400. That's CD offer 11 55, God's Creative Power for Healing. I challenge you to get this uh, CD and listen to it. You can confess the confessions with me. After you hear it a few times, you'll be able to confess them as I confess them and as you drive your automobile or whatever you're doing. It's important to get the Word of God in you. Paul said, the Word is nigh you, it's in your mouth and in your heart. And that is the Word of Faith which we preach. Until next time, this is Charles Kemp reminding you the enemy is defeated, God is exalted, and Jesus is coming soon. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our mp3 teachings ebooks and watch other programs on demand this broadcast has been sponsored by caps ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the word of god to work in the everyday circumstances of your life <laughs>